big part in the media. A new book goes so far as to say that the country has gotten to the point where murder is just another branch of the entertainment industry. And joining me now is the author of The Murder Business, How the Media Turns Crime into Entertainment and Subverts Justice. Former LAPD detective Mark Furman is here. Mark, good to see you. Pretty Richard. provocative title. You, you actually go on in the book, you say murder is a big business, a branch of the entertainment industry. Well, it is, and I th uh, unfortunately, I think the O.J. Simpson case was unintentionally something that the media, the news media, actually looked at, and, and they looked at their ratings, and talk about a watershed of ratings and money coming into these networks, and they realized, and from that point on, it became reality TV, but it was real. All right, but now, what does it mean? Does it mean that people, that this is entertainment for people that follow these stories from start to finish? Or, or do people want justice? Is, or is it a combination, too? Well, I think people want justice. I'm not sure that some of the media outlets actually uh, are, are, are on the same train. Uh, because they're competing. And, and any time you have something that gets big ratings and you have news organizations competing for certain people. There's only so many victims, witnesses, and suspects to go around. Or jurors when a, or when a verdict jurors. comes in. Well, the jurors are everybody that you're, you're, you're corrupting. You're corrupting with your opinions, your theories. When you have people that really don't understand what they're, they're batting around as far as facts, you, you are polluting that but jury you, pool. you've experienced this. I mean, you know, what was it like in the O.J. days? Now, you talk about O.J. and the... I, I do. the, the the story that got it all started is how you refer to it, but in those days, everybody wanted you on TV. I mean, I, I called you at, at key moments, you know, during certain crimes and trials sure. that were going on. I said, Mark, we really need you tonight because we need your insight, because I think the audience would want to hear what Mark Furman had to say based on your life experience. But, you know, it's interesting what you say is, now I work for Fox. We both yeah. know that. I still work for Fox. And... Uh, Fox has taken a different tack on, on this issue. I mean, they hired myself, they hired Dr. Bodden, they have certain prosecutors that we give advice to you, right. to Greta, sure. to, to Geraldo about certain cases, and there's, there's something else. Dr. Bodden and I will not compromise an investigation for a rating. Yeah, but well, you've always, let, let me put it this way. Uh, and this has been a great mystery to me. And you go through a number of cases, Drew Peterson, you talk about OJ, uh, or Scott Peterson, you go through all these cases, and I, I, people have asked me, why did, did, does the media tend to focus on one case but not another case? If it's a missing well, child, why do we focus on this child well, but not that child? You know, it, it's, it's a difficult formula, but when you look at the statistics, you know, there's probably upwards of 60 to 100,000 juveniles that are missing any one year. About 100 of those will be dead. About 80% are found, so you've got some that are still missing and about 100 children that are dead. But the formula is um, a white female under a certain age gets the attention. It usually starts from mm -hmm. the geographic area where it occurs, the, the networks. They start it, and it's picked up, like Kaylee Anthony. Yeah. It became a cottage industry. We have you know, dolls, T-shirts, everything. That's, that's People, nuts. Well, it is nuts, but it stems from the media saying that she's missing. Yeah. But, all right, is there anything that we do wrong, like on a program like this, for example, uh, Natalie Holloway or Scott Peterson? You know, we covered those stories at the time because they were big news events and people wanted to watch it. I mean, is it wrong to cover a no, story? No, it, it isn't, but I think that there's a, there's a, there should be a built-in ethics and responsibility. Well, and what's the eth Where do people cross well, the line? Well, you cannot, you, you, you know, doctors and nurses, they, they take a, an oath. And one of the parts of that oath is do no harm. Well, I think detectives, they, I, I think in essence, do the same thing. Do no harm. But the, the case is about the victim. I think everybody would agree. But the victim is forgotten. When you, when you see these cases, it becomes more about the, the drama, the satellite people involved with it. And all these people, you have to understand that, that when we talk about a case, I share what I find out with the police agency that's involved. You I, do. I if, talk if, to them. If, if you find something or, I, if, or have a thought or a theory, you'll contact police. I will contact them and I will check to make sure that I can go somewhere 
or mm. should I not go somewhere? Because I understand what they're doing, and I think I think that's one reason that Fox has me working mm. and Dr. Bodden. Dr. Bodden and I talk a lot. Have you, ha and Dr. Bodden's a good friend, have you ever found yourself in a position where law enforcement said, Mark, you're really on to something here? If you bring it up publicly, it's going to hurt the investigation. Yes, I've sat on things, and one of them was the Kaylee Anthony case. Can you tell us now? I cannot. <laughs> you can't tell us now? No, because I, I gave my word that no, that, were, oh, no, that's fair that uh, the, the investigators uh, trusted I would, me. That, I was surprised uh, you not. brought up the strange death of, uh, of Vince Foster. Well, you know, I think, Sean, the, the, the part of this where, you see, the media is paying for news. They're paying to lock people in. Uh, they're using, they're buying fuzzy photos on cell phones to, to use some justification to get people. And, and these are compromising things, and, and it's the lack of journalistic ethics. They don't have to do this. Well, the Vince Foster is, is a classic example of journalists sitting on their, on their hands. All right, but there is all the time, there's a lot of media outlets we call checkbook journalism. And they're paying Absolutely. for guests. Now, they won't admit to it, but they're going to say, we're going to fly you to New York, we're going to put you in a hotel, we're going to give you an allowance for food. Oh, by the way, we'll pay for those pictures that you have of so-and-so, which is right. really just the backdoor way of what? Paying them to be on the program? Well, they also get an exclusivity on a contract when they take that money that they have to talk to them. In those and only interviews. them? Oh, absolutely. Is that unethical? Yes, it's absolutely unethical. What you're doing is you're compromising the whole criminal investigation. If that person is somebody that is actually going to be a key witness in a criminal trial, what do you think is going to come up? Down the line, if it's somebody that has some knowledge of the case and then they end up at trial and they contradict something they said on a show, absolutely. you can tear them apart so that... Absolutely. Right? When, now, you, you know, there's an unconscious thing that goes on when somebody is brought to New York mm -hmm. for the first time, they're given the fir their first uh, $60 steak, yeah. their first $100 bottle of wine, yeah. and then the interviews in the next, the next morning. Mm -hmm. There is some kind of an attitude that I owe these people something. I owe them a good interview. Are, are there going to be some better adjectives used? Are there going to be more emotion? Is there going to be something that now the jury's going to see and all of a sudden your testimony doesn't reflect exactly what you said? It's funny because I'll never forget, I was flown up from Atlanta to be on the Sally Jesse Raphael program. And the, the producer, we'll fly you up, we'll put you in a hotel. I'm like, I used to live in New York. This is not that big a deal to me. Right. But I could see somebody oh, absolutely. that maybe doesn't have a lot of money, maybe never has been to New York. It's pretty enticing. And, and that's, at that point, they can be compromised. We've got to run in a sec. We, we, it's it's the, the compromise in the investigation and the, the lack of investigative journalism that goes on. Look at the, what happened with the ACORN. You have two people that nobody knows that scoops the entire news in, industry in it's America. Amazing. I don't, know. I don't know what you, what do you do with your hands that like you look like you've been beating up some wood in the background, in the backyard. What have you been doing? I've been uh, rebuilt, I've been painting my, my Porsche for the last seven <laughs> weeks. Right? Yeah, so all they're right. a little beat up. Congrats on the, bu okay, uh, on the Thanks, book. Sean. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. And that is all the time we have left this.